The vampire squid is one of the most unique cephalopods in the world. It is the only surviving member of its order, Vampyromorphida. This order is fairly ancient, with fossils being found back to at least the early Jurassic. Their closest living relatives are the octopi, but they have many quite notable morphological differences from them. The vampire squid is relatively small. It reaches only about a foot in length. It looks vaguely similar to the octopi with its eight tentacles, but unlike the octopi, its tentacles are joined by a cloak-like webbing, and only the parts of the tentacles furthest from the body have suckers. The rest of the tentacle's length is covered in fleshy spines. Mature vampire squid also have ear-like fins on their bodies that they use for propulsion. Another unique feature of the vampire squid is the velar filament pouches concealed in their webbing. Velar filaments are essentially the evolutionary remainder of the vampire squid's ancestors' additional two tentacles, the same two still found in true squids, in addition to the cephalopods common eight. While the octopi lost these additional two arms, the vampire squid retained them as these filaments. They have a rather specialized use in how the vampire squid hunts. You see, the vampire squid lives exclusively in ephotic zones, totally devoid of light. Within these zones is what is called an oxygen minimum zone. Surface ocean waters have oxygen concentrations that are in equilibrium with the Earth's atmosphere. As you descend to the thermocline, the temperature layer separating the upper mixed layer of the ocean with the calm deep water below, organic matter rains down from the life active ocean above. Aerobic bacteria feed on this matter, using oxygen in their metabolic processes. This depletes oxygen from the water around them. As the amount of organic matter in the water decreases sharply with depth, you have the case that there is a point between 200 and 1000 meters where the concentration of oxygen in the water is lower than both above it and below it, the oxygen minimum zone. It is very difficult for higher organisms with aerobic metabolism to survive in the zone. Complex organisms tend to require much larger amounts of oxygen than the oxygen minimum zone can provide. Nonetheless, the vampire squid can live and breathe in this zone to areas with oxygen concentrations as low as 3%, less than any other cephalopod and most other animals besides. The vampire squid accomplishes this perhaps predominantly by their very low metabolic rate, the lowest of all deep sea cephalopods in fact. Their blood transports oxygen more efficiently than in other cephalopods, and they have gills with especially large surface areas. They also require less oxygen thanks to their very weak musculature. They can still move fairly agile though, thanks to a very complex system of organs called statocysts, roughly analogous to your inner ear, as well as ammonium-rich gelatinous tissues that allow them to maintain balance in the seawater. The vampire squid hunts in and out of the zone using its velar filaments, extending them into the water around them as they drift. When the filaments come into contact with an entity, sending vibrations down the filaments, the vampire squid moves quickly towards the source to investigate, swimming at speeds roughly twice their body length per second. If it's their typical prey, shrimps, prawns, small jellyfishes, and other similarly sized organisms, the vampire squid will eat them with their beak. But what if they encounter a predator near the edge of the oxygen minimum zone, or perhaps a mammal that ventures into the aphotic zone to hunt, as whales and sea lions often do? The vampire squid can't really run away, and their hunting method prevents them from schooling for protection, and like octopi, they no longer possess ink glands. No, how they survive encounters with predators is as unique as you'd expect from such a strange creature. In the shallower end of the vampire squid's vertical range, predators with hypersensitive eyes can see the rough silhouettes of the animals when looking up towards the sky. The vampire squid combats this typical hunting method by counter-illumination. The vampire squid generates a bluish light via bioluminescence, which diffuses its silhouette, giving it a cloak of darkness. When they are spotted, though, and are being directly threatened, the vampire squid can react in a few different ways. For one, they can modulate their body's light, producing fortifores to generate hypnotic patterns that hide the nature of the squid, as well as its size. Another method is to take the pineapple posture. The vampire squid inverts its caped arms over its body. Doing this makes it look larger, and brings their fearsome-looking, though ultimately harmless, spines to bear. 
The vampire squid typically is covered in those light-generating photophores, but the inside of their cloak is not. This leaves only the photophores on the tips of their tentacles exposed, away from the vampire squid's head, directing attack away from the vampire squid's body. These tentacles can be regenerated, so losing these is not necessarily lethal to the squid. The vampire squids also have one last way they can protect themselves, though they typically only use it in extreme situations due to the high metabolic cost. When threatened, the vampire squid is capable of releasing a sticky cloud of bioluminescent mucus from the tips of their arms, filled with photophores generating blue light. These lights last for nearly 10 minutes, dazing and dazzling any would-be predators and allowing the vampire squid to vanish back into the darkness without the need for heavy exertion. They essentially ninja into the night.